Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. So today is the first week of Advent, uh, the first Friday of the month. Um, it's a beautiful uh, first Friday devotion that we have. Uh, there are so many. I, I just heard the other day uh, in one of the writings, they said that there are some traditions that we kind of uh, fell asleep in, in people's mind. It's one of them is the first Friday devotions. Usually when you go first Friday, there's a lot of people in the church. But today is we don't see that kind of because I think people have fallen asleep after COVID probably. Maybe we need to revive that kind of. Um, there is a, there is a, uh, especially this is, the, you had a sacred art school in a sacred art devotion that's kind of more, uh, we need to invite more people for that first Friday because it helps them to grow, come closer to the Lord. Today we see this blind man is coming in and uh, Jesus asked them, you know, do you believe that I can do this? I mean, they're following Jesus because they want the cure. But Jesus is still asking that question. Jesus knows everything. Jesus has the answer. But Jesus still asks the question, do you believe that I can do this? I mean, you might feel funny, but just like, I don't know, in the story of uh, the Jordan River, that uh, the guy comes from the Naman and the, the, the story, you know, he comes, you know, and he comes to Prophet Elisha and uh, asks, uh, you know, can you kill me? And he says, go and take shower, you know, take a bath seven times in the Jordan River. And he kind of looking at his servant, he said, don't you think I have any other river in, the, in my place that I have, that Jordan River, that is not even, they don't clean well, that I got to go there and clean it. But you know, the servants kind of, kind of quiet, quiet him down saying, you know, Master, don't you know that if you'd have asked harder, if you he had, if the prophet would have asked him harder the finance, you would have done it. This is so easy. Why don't you just do it? Then he said, well, that may be better. And he goes and takes that shower at the bath seven times. He got healed. See, sometimes a prophet, you know, a person who speaks the word of God will not tell you what you want to hear. It's always true. Okay, when you go to a priest for an advice, when you go to a priest for a confession, they will not tell you what you want to hear. Why? Because that is not how God works. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Heaven is higher than the earth. My ways and my thoughts are higher than yours. So we need to understand God. So when a person says, if you're going to ask a priest or someone an opinion, about your spiritual life or your life, do not expect that what you want to hear. And we, we do. You know, as a, as a people of God, we want to hear what we want to hear. Otherwise, what do we do? We show proud. We show proud. We go to a priest and say, oh, what the, this is my problem. He says, no, we can do it. Uh, I don't like that answer. Let me go to the next priest. This becoming a bad habit in Catholic Church. A bad habit. We don't want to accept what the truth is, so we go around bending the truth. And we need to stop. And we need to tell the people to stop. Because if you don't do it, what happens? We won't get healed, but we become blinded like these people. And that's why Jesus says, do you believe that I can do this? Do you believe that I can do this? You know, many times, you know, uh, I, this is something I heard also in the, in the churches in America. When I came, because if I, I was in the cities, the people go to one parish and they don't like that priest. What do they do? They go to the next parish. And they don't like that priest. What do they do? They go to that. They call it hop, hopping. Hopping? Mm -hmm. What is it? Hopping. It's like, wherever I, whatever I want to get, I go. Wherever I want to get, I go. It's, it pleases me, I go there. <laughs> that is not what Jesus taught. There is a spirituality it's completely wrong here. Right? I, I understand, of course, you know, sometimes when the priest sometimes talk or something, the priest, other priests say, it's okay, you go to different church. Remember, if I cannot forgive to one person and go to the next church, you think that it's going to help me? It helps my, my, own, my own body, not my soul. We have to tell the truth, and the truth will hurt. And the, but the truth also will set you free. 
right? So we need, we need to get into here. So just, just asking this question, do you believe that I can do this? Because I had a guy, a young guy called me from Canada. So that's amazing. He still remember this when I was reading this. And this young guy, he, he's very good. He's one of the leaders in Canada, you know, preached you know, to, to, to being international. But he never, his marriage was not in India. The Asian says marriage fixed. So they never, they tried so many marriages, they never clicked. So then one of his friends, I was on the phone, he said, oh, you know, he was introducing me. And I said, oh, I was happy to hear that, you know, you're doing a lot of good in the Canada, doing, you know, spreading your faith. So I was talking about it. Then, you know, said, can you pray for my marriage? The first question I asked him was this, do you believe that Jesus can do this? And he says, Father, he was asking, Father, I am preaching the word, I'm preaching the faith. What do you want to ask? I said, I didn't ask you all those. I want to ask you one thing. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? He got my answer and he said, yes, I do. I don't hear it well, Father, but he said, I asked the question, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And he said, yes, Father. Then you will see what happens. You know, the next day, his parents are ancient married and calling me back. I was even surprised that it happened. But this word, he did not put into his heart. This word, I mean, I tell you, this was, this was a real story. You know, he called me and said, Father, that was amazing. I was like, no, it's not. What's happened here is the truth. We could do a lot of good things out there. But does it mean that I believe? Okay? Many times I ask, oh, who are you to ask me again? Do you believe? <laughs> I'm a Catholic more than you were born. They tease me, they mock me because you say I'm younger than you. But I tell you, if you say yes to the heart, from your heart, you will see the power of God that comes out. So I was asking God, you know, it was one of the things I was seeking was there's a time that God releases his power. There's a moment that the God, God unleashes his power. The timing is unknown to me for a long, long time. I've been searching for it when God unleashed this power because I know there is a moment you ask and there's a time that God released. Unleash this power of God when it comes. Any miracle is possible. I know word of God has something to do with it, but word of God and the power of God has to meet. That's why he says, you're misled because you do not know the scripture and the power of God. See, those two has to meet the miracle to take place. I've been looking for it a long, long time because you know why? If, if you're able to bring those together by God's mercy or grace, then the, any miracle is possible. One of the things I found that with the Bishop Collins, as I was asking, you know, whenever he came here for confirmation, he invokes the Holy Spirit. He invokes the Holy Spirit. You know, I never knew, but it, he becomes so powerful. Holy Spirit becomes so powerful when he invokes. I never knew this, you know, but he was using the silence. Is using the silence, he, you know, he says and he become quiet. You know, and he was saying the other day in priest meeting, one of the reasons he said was, silence is part of the liturgy. And in that silence, remember Jesus said, the God will fight for you, you just need to be still. You can do all these prayers, but that moment of silence, that if I, if you and I could be entered into the rest of God, that is where God becomes powerful. In your weakness, In your tiredness, God become active. When you are not doing anything, that is where God acts. Because God does not need you. Many times we act, we try, we push. And God says, I'm waiting for you to be still. That's why he said, be still. Then you will know that I'm God. Until I become still completely, body, soul, and spirit. You'll never know who God is. But you need to learn as a Catholic this. And this is where the power of unleashes. Let us ask Jesus today in a special way that He's asking that 